You're listening to You Radio. Let your voice be heard. My name is Ryan Funk here with you on You Talk. It's a program dedicated to diversity here in Canada, highlighting native born and new Canadians' culture and experiences. The Scandinavian Cultural Centre of Winnipeg is a volunteer driven organization with members joining clubs of the five Nordic countries Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and of course Sweden. I had the wonderful opportunity to connect with Sonja Lundström. She's the president of the Swedish Cultural Association of Manitoba. I asked her about connecting to a culture an ocean away, community, family, and Nordic traditions. I was born and raised in Red Lake, Ontario, uh, where my mother ventured up there as a cook in 1939. And um, uh, because she was from an Icelandic family of 13, um, and they all had to go make money. She had been working at the Union Starcars restaurant, found she could make double the money in a mining town. And uh, so she got all the clothes and she had to go by taxi to Lac de Bonnie, And then she had to fly by bush plane into Red Lake. And when she landed there, her name is Olivia Johnson. When she arrived there, they said, oh my God, you're a woman. She applied for the job by telex. She thought it was an Oliver and she's supposed to sling beer on Friday night in the pub. <laughs> well, mom said, I'm staying there. I'm staying here until I got to pay up all the debt. So uh, they said, OK. So they put her up in the hotel. The first day she made homemade bread for the miners lunches. The next day she made cinnamon buns. Then she made lemon meringue pie. They said, you're hired. We'll get somebody else. Meanwhile, my dad was mining in El Dorado mine. And although they, they had minimal writing skills, his sister had said, you know, all of whom he'd met in the fish camp, is working in a mining town. Oh, my God, my dad. My dad was up on, uh, oh, my God, uh, uh, Great Slave Lake. But he managed to get by Red Lake by walking roads and canoes and to find my mom. And uh, they got married, and I'm the first child. And we had a wonderful life. (laughs) And lots of Scandinavian people there. Okay, so I've been raised very Scandinavian. So tell me a little bit about the uh, association. We're a club within the Scandinavian Centre that consists of all the Nordic countries, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, and Denmark. And the Swedish Cultural Association um, is an organization of of people of Swedish descent or those interested in our Swedish culture. And uh, we function for food, fun, fellowship, and, and uh, to keep uh, contact with uh, Sweden and celebrate our culture, celebrate our ancestors and our heritage and um, seize every opportunity to connect with other Swedes. Now, one of the things that has been a major initiative <laughs> as a result of our studying our immigration and a, a book that was written about the Swedes of Canada, the Swedes, when they immigrated here in the eight, 1800s and 1900s, uh, they were they were content any place. You just give them some snuff, snuff and, a, <laughs> and a and a saw or an axe, and they're happy in the bush. Okay, so they settled all over the place. Okay, so what we decided, we're going to go visit them. Okay, and we're going to bring our food and our dancing and our singing and our stories. And we started in Ericsdale, and we've gone now to six different places, Ericsdale, Meadows, uh, Sprague, Lac de Bonnie, Lac Lou. And each time we bring the maypole and we dance around the maypole, we bring the big dollar horse, we parade around with it, tell our stories, eat our food, and get the Swedes out of the wood pile, I say. And we've all got that basic feeling like we're suddenly like we're relatives by virtue of getting together with our music. Okay, we've got a band that we take with us too, with our food, with our stories, our way of being that is just so Swedish. (laughs) And it's such a good feeling. Anyway, so we've done that and had a wonderful time. You mentioned you were uh, raised uh, uh, with uh, the Scandinavian uh, culture. Uh, Maybe go into brief uh, detail exactly what that all entails. What exactly is that for people who are living here in Canada or other cultures? What exactly does Scandinavian all mean? We like to work hard and we like to play hard. (laughs) And um, uh, well, we've got a heavy dose of perseverance. The Finns call it Sisu. (laughs) But... 
but um, uh, well, we just do it, and the job gets done. <laughs> and um, like adventure and challenges, uh, uh, natural our like favorite thing is to pick mm. mushrooms and blueberries and swim and be out in nature and be out in nature, summer or winter. Mm. You know, there's no such thing as bad weather. It's another adventure. And and like to get together and tell mm. stories and tell stories. <laughs> and I, I was raised that way with the different prospectors and the different Swedes that would meet at our place, hear the, all the stories. Um, and my mom is Icelandic. And the Icelanders, oh, my God, they really love to get together. <laughs> and, and And again, tell the stories and eat the food and have the music and sing, 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 sing. Uh, it's a wonderful way to live. <laughs> I was just going to ask, uh, do you find it difficult at all to connect with, you know, a culture that's like a whole ocean away? No, it, it's in me. It, it, you know, it's it, the, it, it, even like the culture we experienced here. I've been to Sweden three times. I've been to Iceland five times. I've been there. It's different than what we experienced here. Okay because of our ancestors, but there are similarities also, okay? Like, it, that's the new country. We're kind of the old country. Vina tart is a good example of that. Like, we make Vina tart here, but they don't make it there. <laughs> uh, what, there are certain things that we do, like, I'm just talking about food. Book, books is another, mushroom picking. The foods, oh, my God, the foods, the herrings, the herrings, you know, the, the lutefisk, the, the gravloxes, the... The breads, the breads, the breads, the cookies, the cookies. <laughs> it's just in us, okay? Uh, and, and, and to live off fish and nature, okay? Like re reindeer and deer meat is sacred there. It's in my family every time. It's, it's a celebration. You know, that's what we brought with us from there. <laughs> There's part Scandinavian culture here in Canada and then part over there. It's still, it still meshes. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I've been been there, and I stood on the rocks, and I, I like there's something in my soul about being there. That and I, the only thing I could say there's cell memory. <laughs> the indigenous people say we have seven generations in us, so seven generations in my soul, in my cells. That and that's what we do in our club. Try and get those cell memories going, get people on fire about it. Because when you get together with your own culture, there's just, we bond. It's unbelievable. It's a feeling that's very special. And I keep saying in our Swedish club, I'm so grateful that we've got to know one another. There's something so special here. We're so lucky we have this culture for us to, to, to be a part of enriching our lives. And the organization right now, you, uh, they're celebrating all of this uh, culture in a virtual form. Tell me a little bit about that. Right. Isn't that great? <laughs> well, we were going to have, uh, to celebrate Manitoba 150, we were going to have a big celebration. And then COVID hit, okay? And we'd applied for a grant, so we got the grant. So uh, while well, we decide, or they said, if we could use some of the grant, we could carry it over to next year. So we decided to do a virtual. And meanwhile, okay, as part of our Swedes on wheels, our party on wheels, we were going to these different places and collecting story. And we decided for Manitoba 150, we're going to take those stories and put it on our webpage. And during COVID, send one each month to our members. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, and from that grew the idea, let's all the clubs do that. And it could be part of our virtual history day, history museum. So that's what's on our webpage now are those stories. And it's a way of keeping them recorded. It's a one way of sharing them. Um, we've discovered so many things that, I mean, well, the Swedes and the Icelanders, they've all done. <laughs> and, and we're all in this party together. <laughs> of course. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Is there any like uh, songs or foods? And you were mentioning something about a Christmas tradition that kind of um, speaks out to you and is very close to your heart. Oh, lots. Okay. Well, Lucia is coming up. So we're doing Lucia virtual. Like 
you know, Lucy is a lady uh, celebrating the darkness. Like one thing when I was in Sweden, they celebrate the darkness. Okay. And, and uh, it's a time, well, there's different words for it. Hoogie, legum, you know, they call for coming in, uh, reflecting, meditating, and, and also a party. And, and so we celebrate that with Lucia. And Lucia is on the, uh, well, Lucia is on the 13th of December, the darkest day of the year, and with candles in her hair singing Santa Lucia. And, and, and we have a, a, a train of kids in these white outfits with their little candles, all singing in Swedish. Some of them are only four years old and they're singing it in Swedish. <laughs> and of course, we all come to celebrate it. This is a bringing light at this time of darkness and also lucia also would the, the oldest in the family uh with the candles and hair brings um hot chocolate or coffee and lucia buns uh, uh to the oldest people in the family and all the family they have a special breakfast and then they go out to the streets and the schools and celebrate bringing light at this darkest time of the year and in addition to that, we have a party at the center for this, and we all dance around the Christmas tree and sing our songs <laughs> and eat our food and, you know, pepacaca, glug, you know, all those things that are special to celebrate this time of year. Similarly, we, we celebrate the brightest time of the year, midsummer. And midsummer is usually out at Basilon, or at, we take the dollar horse and the maypole with us and we pick wildflowers and you make a garland for your hair you make a garland for the maypole and then we all go and dance around the maypole because we're celebrating now that summer is here let's get out and enjoy the light the light 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 <laughs> of midsummer and with it really sounds like these uh th this culture uh community is just ingrained we're trying to keep it alive <laughs> People from Sweden have said, in some ways, we're more alive with these traditions than they are in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes us happy because it's something that's held, we've held on to. Like my mom and dad and my grandma, when they first arrived, they'd go to the midsummer. Okay. And I heard about it. And, and so uh, since I've, uh, I've, and been part of the club here we've been doing it here i've been doing it for i guess about 60 years now and uh it's a wonderful way of connecting it's such a wonderful feeling picking the wildflowers making the garlands you know listening to the music again playing the music dancing around, being um uh, being uh just fun loving it's all fun loving <laughs> oh that's amazing is there any other stories that you would like to the share for, uh, from your culture or maybe some interesting things that have happened at, at the association? Well, of course, we celebrate Folklorama. I think one of the big things is when we went to Kenora with our big dollar horse on a trailer <laughs> and with all our, what well, we made all our own costumes, okay? We got our, our cultural costumes. That's everything, okay, I think, one of the things is whatever we do, we all get together and do it and we work, but it becomes play. Like we made all those costumes and we had so much fun doing it. Okay. Okay. What's what, that going to lock loop? These road trips have, and going to lock to Bonnie, I tell you with our maple and, and no matter it lacked to Bonnie. Okay. It was pouring rain and we had the maple. Well, we had to go inside the Pioneer Club. We had a beautiful log cabin. We were going to be outside. And you always decorate with birch trees at the entrance for midsummer. Okay, so we had them there with our flags. And it's pouring rain and windy. We can't go out. I went and I grabbed that birch tree. I hung out. It became the maypole. Everybody danced <laughs> on. Everybody took turns hanging on to it. We had so much fun. Uh, I don't know if there's any one story. <laughs> We've had a lots of, we've had so much fun. <laughs> We're proud of the stories too. Oh, of course. You need to be able to, to celebrate and get excited about, you know, history, heritage, as well as just the stories that you uh, create with friends and family. Yeah, we're creating. And, and 
okay, we love to get together and make things. We have sewing bees and we make our dollar horses. We make our tomtas. We knit together. La vie commits. You know, when we get together, we got to be doing something. <laughs> Eating or... <laughs> mm. <laughs> Keep yourselves busy. <laughs> One of the things is I, when I went to Sweden, I insisted I was going in the wintertime because my whole family skied. I was born with skis, and I wanted to go there in the wintertime. It's 30 below, but they're out there bare hands, you know, with their Christmas mark or their winter mark of selling stuff. And they're used to There's no wind. But anyway, I went to the bakery, mm -hmm. and I saw these buns. Oh, my God, they were so gorgeous. Well, I found out that they're the the fat day buns they're semla buns they take the inside out they put marzipan in with inside of the bun and whipped cream okay that top of whipped cream oh Ooh. it's to die for so i decide i'm bringing that back to canada we're going to make the semla buns and we're going to have the semla bun oh we do every year and it's so good <laughs> mm, sounds delicious just you describing it <laughs> And you mentioned even the younger generation has been getting involved in some of these traditions and things. You gain the, uh, the, the young kids as young as four uh, singing uh, and taking part. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's Lucia. You know, it's so much a part. That's particular a Swedish people. Okay. And, and although we're not having Lucia this year, we're going to do it virtual. They'll be still doing it. Like if you start singing those songs at a young enough age, by the time you're 12, you're Lucia, and you can really sing it. And one of the girls, like one of the girls that sings Wonderful, Wonderful Copenhagen, she started, she's now an opera singer, but she started singing Lucia. And like to sing Lucia is very, very beautiful. And, and the violin player is also one of our Swedish girls. And, and they get to express their gifts through Thing, events like Folklorama, Lucia, those different events that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, this summer, because of COVID, I got the, the Swedish or the, the Scandinavian band out in our park out here. Mm -hmm. Got everybody here. Come on, <laughs> we're going to have a we're going to have a, pic, a, a outdoor concert. So we did. And then I I found an accordion player. Music makes it. I found an accordion. He loves to play. I got him here, and I had everybody in the park for a lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know. To, uh, uh, food and fellowship and music. Uh, I've just created a, a, a yuckmuck reindeer dance. <laughs> and it's on our YouTube. Okay. Right. And I, whenever I talk, I've got a 97 year old friend, mm -hmm. uh, oh, a Swedish friend. Okay. And she's even doing it. Um, and uh, uh, no, this is all, but this 97 Gunver Larson is uh, a lady to be reckoned with. And she has just won Manitoba 150, one of the 150 Manitobas that are being celebrated. Mm -hmm. she's, she's our matriarch. She's our guide, a wonderful, wonderful person. And she's always after us. I keep doing more. Well, fantastic. Where can people go to find out more information uh, about the, uh, your organization and to find out more about Scandinavian and, and Swedish culture? Scandinaviancenter.ca is our webpage. If they want to talk to somebody, phone the Scandinavian Center, and then they'll get in we'll get in touch with somebody. The Scandinavian Cultural Center now looks to building a mural to celebrate 60 years as a center, as well as Manitoba's 150th. If you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight, leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk, and have yourself a good one.